Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we're taking a look today at a couple of new Mocha adapters from GoCoax. These are their new two and a half gigabit adapters. And you might be saying, well, Lon, didn't we look at a couple of Mocha 2.5 adapters last year? We did, but the problem was that although the adapters ran at two and a half gigabits per second over coax, you were only getting a gigabit out of the ethernet. Now they have 2.5 gig ethernet on the end, so you can theoretically make use of the entire bandwidth through a pair of these adapters. Now we have covered Mocha in detail in the past in other videos, so we're not going to go over all of the basics of this technology. I would definitely suggest you take a look at some of those videos if you want to learn more. But in a nutshell, Mocha allows you to use your cable TV wiring as computer wiring, and it allows you to do that without interrupting your cable or satellite television service. This is a standard that the industry has agreed upon, so your data for internal network communications runs alongside all of your TV signals and whatnot, so you can really get the best of both worlds here without having to rewire your home. Ethernet is always the best, but if you can't rewire for whatever reason and you've got these wires in the wall already, go with Mocha and I think you will really enjoy things. And again, we've covered the technology in a good amount of depth in prior videos. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that GoCoax sent these to me free of charge. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. And I should also add that the Mocha Alliance, which is the standards body for this technology, is a past sponsor here on the channel, but they are not sponsoring this video. So let's get into it now and see what these new adapters are all about. Now, the price point on these is $74.99. You might be wondering, why would I buy this more expensive one over the lower cost one that they're selling that also supports the Mocha 2.5 standard? And the answer is, is that if you have a multi-gigabit network or a multi-gigabit internet connection, in other words, a network that runs faster than one gigabit per second, then you might want to consider these because you can get two and a half gigabits out of the ethernet on the more expensive version here. The lower cost one supports 2.5 gigabit, again, over the coax cable, but the output is only one gigabit. Now, what's nice about the Mocha standard is that it is a standard that's been around for a while. And like all the other Mocha devices we've looked at here on the channel, these will interoperate with older versions of Mocha. So if you've got a 1.0 out on your network somewhere, it will communicate with that just fine at a lower speed, but it will also communicate at the faster speed with newer devices. And in my testing, these have been working fine with some of my other Mocha devices that are slower and from other brands, which is nice to see. Now, one thing I was disappointed about on these new units, though, is that there's no built-in splitter for sharing the coax connection with a television or cable box. So the other version allows you to run your uh, cable out of the wall to a mocha jack, and then there was an output to plug your TV in, so you didn't have to get another splitter to get everything to work at the same time. Uh, these will require you to purchase a splitter, and I would strongly recommend you get a mocha compatible splitter. And if you do a search for one, you will find a splitter kind of like this one, that will cover the frequency ranges that Mocha 2.5 requires. And I found in my experience that your house likely has a bunch of older splitters all over the place. So my suggestion if you're doing this as a project is to go through and identify the location of every split you've got and just swap out the splitter with one that is Mocha compatible or at least verify that the splitter you're using covers the frequency range here so you don't have any disappointments or more aggravation. And again, I would have liked to have seen the splitter built in. Uh, otherwise, though, the hardware is just as simple as it was before. In fact, for the most part, if you just plug these things into your coax network, they'll find each other and start communicating with each other. And what you typically do is you take one and plug it into your router, and then every place you want to add another network connection, you just plug it into the coax connection and you're off and running. Now, there is a security function on these, which I would suggest you use. Uh, there is one setup procedure that you have to do first, so let me show you the control panel where you can get at that. Now, each of these adapters has a web-based control panel. Oddly, they did not give you any information in the instruction leaflet as to how to get into that control panel on these new adapters, but the information as to how to do it on the old adapters is valid for these new ones. So what I would do is go to their website, download the instructions for the old one, and that'll get you into the control panel. I've since assigned it an IP address on my local network so I can more easily get into it. 
Uh, so that was something they've got to do a little bit of work on, I think. Um, but when you're in here, if you go over to security settings and then enable, and we'll wait for the uh, page to come up here, uh, and then enable the DEXT band and then set your own password here, uh, you will then get your first unit encrypted. And that way it will uh, not be as easily snoopable if somebody were to gain access to your coax network. And then as you bring new adapters on the network, what you can do is push down the MPS button on the main unit and then go to another unit that you're bringing onto the network and push its button too. And then they will pair themselves up without having to go into the control panel again. So it's a very convenient way to get encryption going. I set it up on a live stream a little while ago. It wasn't very difficult at all, and I would strongly suggest you do that. Now, one other useful feature of this control panel is the Mocha link rate section. And what's cool about this is that you can take a look and see all the Mocha devices on your network and the speeds that they're operating at. So in this instance, Mocha adapter number zero can communicate with Mocha adapter one at this bit rate. Now, of course, there's a lot of overhead which is why eventually you're down to about two and a half gigabits, but this will give you an idea as to how all of your devices are interoperating. And this is a really useful page for troubleshooting any issues you might run into. All right, let's step through a couple of different speed tests. And I want to explain how we've got everything set up here. I did swap out ethernet cables just because I rearranged how I had things connected in case you're wondering. So this adapter here is plugged into my Windows computer. And that Windows computer is connected via a Thunderbolt Ethernet connection at two and a half gigabits out of this green cable. So all of the data that comes into that computer is going to come through the coax and out the green cable to the Ethernet adapter. And then of course, any data that we send out is going to come through the green cable into the box and then out through the coax connection. It will then travel through the coax network here through the cable to this adapter which is connected to the rest of my network. So picture this one as being next to your router and this one being in the remote room that you want to connect. Now for the purposes of our test today, I've got a 100 foot coax cable here that's running uh, all the way in my room and back again in one big loop, uh, just to kind of simulate a longer cable. And you will encounter performance variability based on uh, how many splits you have and the power that you're able to get on the other end of the cable. And so in many cases, if you're going a really long distance, you might want to look at a Mocha compatible amplifier if you're seeing speeds dropping off at farther distances. But right now we're going to go about 100 feet. Now, not to brag here, but I've got a super fast internet connection. It's two gigabits symmetrical. So let's hit the go button here and we'll see where we end up. So the first thing that'll happen here is it's going to ping the server in Boston. And as you can see here, we are well north of a gigabit. So we're downloading data from the Comcast server here at two gigabits per second through the Mocha adapters here over the coax cable. And then we're able to uh, shoot data back at around that same speed. This test often varies a bit because sometimes I actually max out the server. But as you can see here, we had an awesome connection, very similar to what I would get on ethernet. The ping rate there of 10 milliseconds is about three or four milliseconds higher than what I get on Ethernet. And so these will add roughly three or four milliseconds of latency to whatever you're connecting to. Not a lot. And again, the speeds here, I think, speak for themselves, at least with an internet speed test. Now, a little bit earlier, we ran an iPerf test, which is a local network benchmark test. And as you can see here, when we were sending data from the client computer to a server, on the local network here, we were pushing about 2.3 gigabits per second. That's what I would expect out of a 2.5 gigabit ethernet connection. And then we reversed the test and went the other way from the server to the client. And here we also saw results similar to what we saw on the internet test and that we were getting the same speeds here in both directions. So as far as these network bandwidth tests are concerned, we are getting 2.5 gigabits. Now, one thing to note about Mocha is that it is not symmetrical. So you get two and a half gigabits total in either direction, and these devices will negotiate how to divvy up that available bandwidth. But if you're downloading and uploading at the same time, you're dealing with a total pool of two and a half gigabits per second, 
not two and a half gigabits simultaneously in either direction. So let's take a look at a real world example here, some file transfers. We're going to grab this file here, about 1.6 gigabytes, and copy it to my PC. I'll just agree to the security issue here and click uh, continue. And as you can see, we're transferring this at what we would expect out of a 2.5 gigabit connection. So all is good in that direction. Let's see how fast we can copy files back. All right, so I've got the file here. I just renamed it and we're going to drag it back over to the other computer. And as you can see, we're able to send files back over the network at the same speed we received them at. Again, remember that Mocha is not a symmetrical network, so if there's other network activity going on in either direction, you will see different performance here. But by and large, these Mocha adapters are delivering two and a half gigabits all the way through. So altogether, this is working as advertised. And just remember, if you do not have a multi-gigabit network, you do not need to buy the more expensive version here. The other Go Coax adapter that is Mocha 2.5 compatible costs less and has gigabit Ethernet, which is what most networks are currently running at, at least at the time I'm shooting this video. This will not be any faster than those unless you have a multi-gigabit switch or router. So if you've got one, great, you'll see the speed increases. If not, go with the other one. And then if you ever upgrade to a faster switch or router, you can use these devices along with the other ones seamlessly. They really interconnect quite well. Power consumption is very reasonable, about five or six watts. So all in, a great way to extend your network if you don't want to run Ethernet. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Jim Callagher, Hot Sauce and Video Games, and Brian Parker. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.